got some energy to take up some target. I did not. Okay. Did you text Ron or me? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I texted whoever was communicating. I was communicating. Probably Ron. Ron. Yeah. I, I've got a 1030 conference call i got to make. Okay. And so it, we'll see how things are going here. I may just step out. Okay. And, no big deal. Yeah. Oh. Are you tired of meeting with, the, with us yet? That's okay. It's, it's, not, it's not about being tired about um, meeting with you guys. It's that. Um, it's kind of like, um, I, I think about it in my mind, it's like a, a, an aquarium and when you, you know, you go um, your hand on the bottom and then all of a sudden all this stuff comes up. So it's, it's the stuff that comes up. That's a good you know? analogy. Yeah, yeah. Brings up all. Brings up all kinds of stuff, you know, and yeah. doubt and memories and, you know, and connections and then you like it all, you know. Yeah. No, and, I get it. And then you just like start beating yourself out because, you know, how could I ever thought of anything like this or get involved with people like this and how could I be received so much and, well, how could I be so stupid? Well, don't beat yourself up. <laughs> all that. And all that comes up, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, that's, what, that's the hard part of it. And hopefully this is the last time that we have to talk to um, But we just needed to go over a couple more things just from clarifying questions since we've been doing the investigation that have kind of come up again. Okay. Okay? Do you need water or anything, or are you good? I'm okay. Okay. Um, you remember Vince? I hope so. Fremont okay. County? Fremont County. That was a nice one. I do, <laughs> So, how's everything been going? Are you getting back to normal life and back on track? and? Trying to, you know, once in a while something comes up or, you know, some reporter comes up or, you know. Or you get a call from Garrett saying, hey, these guys want to talk to you. Yeah, or like, you know, usually it's reporters that are reaching out to people to get information about me because, you know, I haven't talked to the media. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're always, try, always trying to get some kind of info. They're still trying, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay, Sulema, um, so like I said, we're down here just to ask a couple more questions. We, one second. You know, we gotta go, we gotta go. Yeah, it's, <laughs> we prepare for it and boom. But I was saying that when we were walking in, we left, I think it was 51, 52 mm -hmm. in Idaho, and came here. Yeah. It's awesome. This, yeah, yeah, this is... <clears throat> it's awesome. We are, we're doing a remodel on our house, and it's, um, you know, it's opened up to the elements quite a bit. And we started it in January and had a, you know, section of the back wall that was about that big, as big as that wall that was opened up. And just had a tarp up over it, so it was, it was sealed up. You know, the wind wasn't blowing yeah. in, but the air was. You know, there's no temperature variant at all, and, and half of my roof was, half of my ceiling in my home was exposed to the roof, and so you know, the cool air would just come in at night and just pour in there. And I think the concrete slab of my house got chilled down to about 45 degrees, and it took it until probably, you know, April to warm up, because <laughs> so it was always cool, but. But we've had it opened up so much that we've been really enjoying the nice weather because I would hate to be doing this in 
in August. I, you know, oh, yeah, really miserable. Yeah. I was just going to ask, so is April, the end of April, 1st of May, when stuff starts heating up and, and really gets going? It's when it gets warmed up in the day. You know, uh, you'll have highs in May. You know, it's always a joke about when the first hundred's going to be. It's usually April or May, and then it'll, it'll be Saturday. Yeah, yeah right. It's, so it's, it's right on track. And But then it will go back down, and it'll be 92. But 92 is warm. You know, it's you step out in 92 and start playing basketball, you're going to feel it. And, yeah. you know, that sun's intense. And, but the mornings and evenings are, are wonderful. My experience is, and you've lived here a long time, too, that in, even into June, you'll come out in the morning, it'll be 68, 70 degrees, and it's beautiful. Um, but then, you know, as soon as that sun, you know, that's the big difference, is that when do you hit 95? If it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon, who cares? If it's 10 o'clock in the morning, all right, now we're talking. Yeah. That's, and that's, that's when right. it starts getting intense, when it's 95 at, two in the mor- at 10 in the morning. And then you're like, okay, yeah, it was, it was 70 this morning, but it, we warmed right up. So if, you'll, you'll get a, if you're here Saturday, you'll get, a, you'll get a taste of it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's... it's Everyone I know right now is getting happy because it's getting into like 65, 75, and we're all like, yeah. Finally, golfing. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah. So. Sorry, that was my wife. No. Hey, you got to answer when she calls. So, Zulima, as we've been going over things, we've been going over reports that you have given to Gilbert initially with Alex's death. And some of those statements that you gave them don't match what she gave us the last time we talked. So I just wanted to clarify kind of why you told them something completely different. Okay? So when I was discussing last time with you um, about... Was this the day that, that Alex died? Is that what, what you're talking about? The day Alex died. Okay. So do you remember anything that you told those guys as far as Lori and Chad or... Very, very little. I don't remember much of what happened. Though. To tell you the truth, there's a part of, like, between, like, two weeks there that there isn't much, like, I, it's very foggy for me. But that night specifically, there are certain things that I remember, but not all of it. And I don't remember, like, I can't put a timeline together. Like, I don't know what happened first and what happened next. I don't know which one was first and which one was second. I really don't. I've been trying to put it together, but I can't have been able to. We've also never seen what, you know, statements she's purported to have made, so it's, you know. Well, I can let you look at a copy, but, so, <clears throat> when Gilbert police let, let me just preface this. We're just trying to eliminate some of the things maybe defense for Lori and Chad are going to bring up during trial. Okay? And and part of that defense could be that they try to pin this on other people, right? So or or make you not look as credible as as what you are in case you have to testify. Mm-hmm. So, in order for us to make you look credible and, and to to use what you say in court, we want to kind of jump out ahead of any type of defense that they're going to bring up and, and try to make it look like you are lying or, or are trying to get back at them or something like that. So, so in o- going over these reports, that's kind of what we are doing to make sure that everything that you told us kind of matches what has happened, right? And so when we were going over Gilbert's reports, there's some things in there that that you said that you told us about when you last talked to Chad and Lori and about when you, well, I'll, I'll just come out and ask you. you. You told Gilbert that you had no idea how to get a hold of Lori and Chad when they ask you who um, Alex was on the phone with. Can you tell me why you told him that? I 
I wonder why I would have said something like that because I told them that they they were on the phone with him. Right, and they and they asked you how to get a hold of him. And in your statement. You said you had only met Lori a couple of times before she moved. And you hadn't seen Lori since she moved a few months ago, and you didn't think Lori was married. Yeah, I don't remember saying that. Well, let's look at those statements. Yeah. Um, it, and when I say look at them, just, just look at them carefully there for a second. You, you didn't think Lori was married, right? Did you know she was married at that point? Yeah, I did know that it was, okay. she was married. Okay. Yeah, because she had sent me pictures of when she had gotten married. Okay. So yeah, I did know okay. that. It, I mean, I didn't. Let me put it this way. I saw the pictures of them on the beach, her dressed in white, him dressed in white, and um, they were dancing and kissing. Right. And all of seen those, we've so, seen all the pictures, yeah. Right. So I assumed... It was assumed that they, that was a okay. uh, wedding ceremony. When you told them, that, what, what, did she, what else did she say in that statement that she hadn't uh, talked to him in a while? What was that statement about? Um, that she had only met Lori a few times. Well, obviously, she's, that's inconsistent with what she's told you guys. Um, that you hadn't seen her since she moved a few months ago. And that you hadn't, didn't think Lori was married. Um, What's the time I hadn't seen her since she left a few months ago? Is there any explanation of that? Was there any timeline on that? Was there, was there any clarification well, of what well, that Well, we meant? know Zulima had gone up there. Right. So she's saying that since she moved. Zulima I wonder if she's talking about. I wonder if she's talking about since they moved to Idaho or to Hawaii. That's what I'm wondering about. She hadn't seen him since they moved to Hawaii. Well, she. Well, that could that's be. Not, that's what I'm trying to find out. That could be, but she said that she didn't know what state Lori and Chad lived in. So those are the type of things that defense is is really going to probably ask you. Yeah. So I didn't when they when they left um, Rexburg, mm -hmm. um, they didn't tell anybody where they were going. Um, not even uh, that. Even Alex was trying to find out where they were at, and he had, he had asked them. Um, where they were at, and they would, they won't disclose where they were at. They didn't. So when. So you had no idea they were in Hawaii. No. What about the times you guys conference called? We when we were talking on the phone, they wouldn't say where they were at. So when they were whenever when they left from Rexburg, mm -hmm. they didn't disclose where they were at. How I found out that they were there is when they were on the news. Okay. Because there's some... So, back in the reports, I don't know if I have that with me. Um, they had talked to you and, and Melanie Boudreaux about going to Hawaii after they were married. Is that not true? This was when... Um, I can't remember when he was, when he was, yeah, I remember them saying that, I remember them saying that, so hold on, let me see if I can, if I can put a timeline on that. Our, our timeline that we have has that uh, roughly in November, and then, and then they go missing in December, November 26th. Mm-hmm. And then you had some conference calls with them the first week or the second, the first week of December. Mm -hmm. You and Alex and Melanie Boudreau. Mm -hmm. um, and Ian was on the phone. And so I'm wondering, based yeah. on all that, and then, and then yeah, this the one, statements to go over. So she said, this could be you, come to Hawaii. Um, what, this no, was, what was that? That was on um, November 9th. This was okay. was the day that they sent this. The pictures. The pictures. Uh -huh. And that. They sent that to you, Chad or Lori? I think this was Lori's. Okay. Um, and she sent it to me and Alex. Do you have that number? Yes. 
Um, she, oh, where is it? I just lost it. Dang it. Um, And and I remember this, I responded to her with a scripture. Um because they were still trying to convince me to move. Mm -hmm. To be clear, they hadn't they didn't tell you they were living there yet, right? I mean this was them for a wedding. They came back after this, right? They came back after this. And then and then it was around it was long around Thanksgiving that they, they vanished. Right, and is that when you didn't know where they went? That's when okay. I didn't know where they went, yeah. So when she said come to Hawaii, it wasn't, hey, we're living here, come move to Hawaii with us. But but I believe they had conversations saying that after they got married, they were moving to Hawaii. Okay. With with Sulema? And, and Melanie Boudreau. Okay. No, I don't know about Melanie, but... Um, and so, so that's why I was wondering when it comes to the Gilbert reports, you say you have no idea where they're at or how to get a hold of Lori or you've only met Lori a couple times. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. Where there's a discrepancy. Yeah, absolutely. So that's why we want to talk about that and, and I wanted to know why you had told Gilbert police that you kind of really didn't know Lori or where she was at. You know, and, and before we, I mean, I don't want you answering something about having potentially misled Gilbert Police Department until I hear the statement. I mean, I, you know, I mean, I think what she's told you guys is the truth. Um, right. And that's what, you know, that's what the agreement was, is that she was going to come in and tell you guys the truth. So, I mean, there's a discrepancy between the two. I mean, clearly. Right, and, that, I, and that's I'm, why we're trying to get out in front of it just before, before trial. Right, sure. We just want to figure out if you, in fact, did make that statement. And, and if you did, why you made that statement? Do you remember making that statement? Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't remember. I remember going to the hospital. They. I remember them putting me in a in a um, ambulance, and they took Alex in another ambulance. And I remember them taking us to the hospital. And I remember them. They started working with him, and then they put me in a room. And I don't remember much of what happened between that and until the time that they brought me back to the room for me to turn off the machines for him. I don't remember when I was taken back there. I don't remember whether someone was, the person that came to talk to me, was it before or after that? I don't remember, and I can't put it together. I can't not put it together. Okay. I don't even remember the name of the person that was there. I don't even remember what he looks like. So if I was to see him right now, I I wouldn't even recognize him. I have no idea. I there's no nothing nothing right there. Um. Then I remember when I turned off the machines. They told me, I remember somebody came saying that I couldn't touch him anymore, that he was considered a crime scene, and that I needed to leave. I asked for a couple of minutes with him. They gave me, like, I don't know how long, but they gave me a few moments with him. And I remember coming out of the room, and my son-in-law came. And I remember him saying to somebody who was there, um... We're going to get a lawyer right now, so speak to our lawyer. And then I remember leaving. That's, that, but I don't remember whether, when that happened. You know what I mean? There's no correlation there for me. None of it. 
I'm going to time right now. I'm going to make that call. Okay. Let me do that, and I'll come back in as soon as I can. You, you guys feel free to chat about anything other than this, and I'll be right back because I'm just going to. They're going to. Yeah. Never missed one call from them. So let me. You're good. Let me go do that, and I will be. I'll be right back. Okay. Have you been to Rexburg or Idaho since? No. It's getting to be nice up there. Is it? Yeah. The last time I was there was cold. Yeah, it's cold like... It was cold for me anyways. It seems like it's cold for eight months out of the year, but... Yeah. Now is the time where it starts to get nice and warm and it's not hot like here, but I'd take the heat. I would take the heat any day. Yeah. I always run two, three degrees colder than everybody else. And mm. you, you think that they will make that big of a difference, but it really does. Well, I'm so, not sure anybody that lives down here owns a jacket, do they? We do, because after you're here for a while, your they call it your blood thins out, and it really does. Oh. So you become kind of a whip. Because as soon as it gets to 70, you're like, ooh, it's so cold now, you know? <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, so when you, and besides the fact that my own temperature is lower than most people, then I'm always cold. Mm. So, <coughs> I have a sweater with me most of the time, most of the year. Really? Uh -huh. Even in the summer months? Mm -hmm, in the summer months, oh because God. when I go inside of a, if, I, if I'm working inside of like a grocery store or you know condition. anywhere, the air condition is too cold for me, so I put the sweater while I'm inside the store and then I take my sweater when I leave the store. So does every house down here have air conditioning? Oh yeah. Yeah, uh, I couldn't imagine living down here without it. Yeah, there are some houses that have those, they call them the swamp coolers. Oh yeah. And some houses run on those ones because it's cheaper to run that than to run an air conditioner. But uh, it's not the same. It's not the same. Well, I think even in Idaho they have swamp coolers. Yeah. But but the older I get, the more I hate heat and the cold. So I have to. I like it between probably 80 and 90 somewhere in there. So in our summer months, we run the air conditioner. Yeah. Even though it doesn't get near as hot up there as it is down here, but yeah, I like the. I like it. It's nice down here. Yeah, to be a walk out. It's nice for a change, but I don't know if, it, if I can live in 110 degree heat. Yeah, I don't think we can do that. So, the first summer is really really tough because your body is not used to it yet and you're like not really well during the summer we don't do things outside we just don't just stay inside you go from the house to the air conditioning house and then from the house to the air conditioned cars and you know some people here also have those uh, starters for their cars oh, yeah. so they start their cars and air conditioning down. before they get into it so that works see that's funny in Idaho we have those to Heat it up. <laughs> to heat it up. Right. There you go. See? So, but... Um, how do they play, like, how do kids play sports down here if it's so, if it's like 110 degrees during the day? So they do it really early in the mornings or sometimes oh. in the evenings, but you never do it, like, in the middle of the day. And in our, our hottest time, it is at 5 p.m. because we're in a... How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Good to see you. Can you complain about hot weather again? Well, no, I'm saying I enjoy it. I don't know if I could do the 110 you could do all it. the time. You could do it. Because you see the offset of that. Because then you have eight months of pure heaven. That's true. So they play... I, they, don't, know. I don't know. That's. Do they do overnight um, sports? Yes. A lot of people, a, a lot of uh, people you'll see them in the courts at night. Yeah. Uh, the, the kids at the, uh, the skate park, um, the basketball courts, and the, um, the parks are usually busier at night than, than Just because it's the coolest time of the day, huh? Yeah, yep, yep, yep. And we, get, and we get used to it, you know what I mean? And you really do. Like in the summer, sometimes I'll go um, taking a jog like around seven, eight o'clock at night. And um, you know, you just, 
you just you're just used to it. So it doesn't really bother you as much as it, as it would the first summer that you're here. Mm. Yeah, I'd imagine you're used to it. I never have gotten used to the cold weather. But no. Yeah, I couldn't either. I couldn't do it that cold. You're not a cold was, person. Mm -mm. I still have that California blood, I think, just a little bit. There you go. That's it. Yeah, I could. I would. I would do heat any day, any day over the cold. Yeah. So, and those four months, really, they're not. People think that they're like horrible, but you just get used to it. You get used to it, and then you you navigate through it. You know, you don't go outside at around five o'clock. You know, you just not gonna do that until until your air conditioning breaks. And then you have to wait a month for a repairman to come because they're so dang busy. So here they don't they don't let you wait a full a full month. That they they'll only make you wait for up to 24 hours and no more than that. Oh, because that's not bad. Because it's like emergency here. You know, yeah, what I mean? you your AC die. needs yeah. to be fixed. It needs to be fixed right away. That'd so. be the work to get into. You would probably make good money to be busy too. They are busy during the summer, extremely busy during the summer. So, you know, some people, when that happens to them, they just go to a hotel for the, oh, really? for the night and then they just come back to the house the following day. Yeah. They Especially if you're, if you're an elderly person and you really can't move or, or go somewhere, they could get pretty sick yeah. or, or die, really, with heat stroke yeah. if they're stuck in a house. Yeah. So, definitely, <clears throat> like, it's something else. Like, I remember one time, one time, uh, my AC got um, broke down, and uh, we had to wait until the fall. Like, it broke in the afternoon, so we had to wait until the following morning. So we had to be without AC throughout the night. We had all the windows open, we had all the fans going, and it was miserable. Miserable. Yeah, I couldn't imagine. Because it was like 98, 99 degrees inside the house. And see, that's the thing with the cold, though. You could always throw more blankets on. Or True. dress warmer. Yeah. Right? With hot, you can get completely naked, and then there's, that's You're just still it. hot. Yeah. True. And at the time, I didn't know, you know, they make these things this makeshift things where they put this bucket right and, and you put ice inside the bucket and then you put a fan on the top and then um, the air that is coming through the sides you make holes on the side of this this bucket so then when you put the, the fan on top the air that is coming out of those holes oh, is cold idea. so you can actually have a makeshift AC that's in your room idea. So anyways, at the time, we, of course, we didn't know that you could do things like that. We could have done that. that yeah, that's really yeah. Good idea. it's a really good idea, actually. Huh. So, there are final kinds of things that you can make on YouTube. When you're in desperate times, yeah. yeah. Exactly. YouTube will help you with all kinds of stuff that you, you have to do, so. Well, my, my kids both play soccer and my daughter plays softball. Okay. And so they're always practice every night, you know, after school or games a couple times during the week on Saturdays. But I couldn't imagine, but it makes more sense they would have them later. Yeah. Because I couldn't imagine them playing in 110 degree weather. Yeah. It would just, I'm sure a lot of kids would get sick with heat stroke or something if they were. Yeah. And they do have, you know, like, like season, season um, sports. You know, there are certain sports that are like, you know, the winter sports, the spring sports, and then some of them there are summer sports. But summer sports are usually like swimming or like mm. gymnastics or, you know, Something like inside, things, yeah. this, most of the stuff is inside, yeah, like volleyball and stuff like that. So, yeah, they don't, they don't do much outside during the summer. I don't do much as I do in the summer, actually, take trips. I take my grandkids sometimes to the park and take them like super late, like right before it go, before it gets dark. So we walk all the way to the to the park. Sometimes we, I drive them, but sometimes we walk so that they can get them really nice and tired. And, and they play for a little bit, and I'm like, okay, guys, getting dark, yeah. let's go. Time to go. Oh, time go to bed. I'm less tired. Day. Yeah. Well, I, I'm <laughs> sure that, that playground equipment gets... 
scorching oh, hot during yeah, the day. You, you can't even get on it. Well, if, if you, I don't know if you've seen them, but a lot of the parks here have those big, um, what are the things called? Like the umbrella the, like, bill? Yeah, they're like made, of, like they're in a um, triangle. Um, they're this big, huge like shape a, for oh. the for the um, the equipment, so that the kids can actually play on them. Because otherwise, they get too hot. Yeah, the they'll burn themselves. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. So yeah, most most of them have the shapes on top of them. Hmm. Yeah, that makes fun. sense. Something that you wouldn't see probably. In Idaho. No, no, and but even in Idaho, I mean in August or July and it's 95 out. I remember taking my kids to the park and you get on those plastic slides. Uh, yeah, and they burn their legs or their hands or... But, so how far do you live from, from the police department here? So is it like a 15 minute drive? 15, 20, 20 minutes, That's yeah. Not no, it's not bad at all. So, seems like, you know, like Chandler and Mesa and Gilbert, it's like, you know, they're so close together. It's like one city. Kind of one thing. Yeah, just kind of one thing. We ended up getting to go to a Diamondbacks game last night. You did? Yeah. That no. Was fun. That's a cool experience. Yeah. Isn't it? That yeah. place amazing. Yeah. Yeah, that was a, that was a fun night. Yeah, you like once you go. On, well, we 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 call him Bob because the first name that he had was Bank of America Ballpark. Oh, okay. So everybody used to call it Bob back when they when they really built it. Now he has had like two or three different names so depending depending on who's sponsoring it. Yeah. But, um, so I don't know what kind of name it is. It's Chase. Chase? Chase okay. Stadium. Chase yeah. Stadium, okay. So, um, but it's just the experience of walking in there and seeing this, I mean, amazing structure. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just an amazing structure they have there. Yeah. Did you guys get to see where the kids' place that they have? Mm -hmm. So up, in, up top, they have a terrace. Um, so kind of interesting how they made it because it's like a terrace so it goes out like this so you can actually see the game and the parents can hang out right there and watch the game and and right here they have a um a playground for the kids and they have batting cages for the kids really so then the kids can actually be playing and you know and entertaining themselves where the parents are you know, drinking and watching yeah. the video or whatever <laughs> nice. they're doing there yeah, so yeah it's really Pretty amazing place. Yeah, we tried going up to the second floor, and they had it shut down. Oh. Because of COVID, yeah, because of COVID, you had to have a special pass to get up there if your tickets weren't up there. So wherever your tickets were, they kind of made you stay on. Ah, uh, okay. So okay. we sat in section 135, kind of down the left field line, the third baseline by left field, and. Those are good tickets. Yeah. It, I was I was pretty impressed with it, but walk, as soon as you walk in, you see the field, you're like, holy smokes, that's cool. It is very cool. It's an experience for sure. Yeah, and I've been to a couple other games, you know, in Denver and Chicago, been to games out there, but it's always cool to see new stadiums. And mm -hmm. Did they have the top open? Yep. Oh, yeah. Yep. And when we got there, the top was closed. And then they opened. And I didn't even know. Did you notice yeah. them opening it? I didn't even see it. The next thing I looked up, and it was open. I'm like, what the heck? Yeah, it's very cool how yeah. they they do that. Sometimes they they open it up and they have um, like uh, the Air Force do a mm. a flyover, yeah. and then that also would be cool. sometimes uh, because the top top all those. They look like it's their walls, but they're really not well, they're panels. So all the panels can actually go like this. So they're actually all the way up on the top. It actually opens up like this. So oh, you can really? actually see all the way outside. So for the 4th of July, if you go, if there's a game on 4th of July, what they do is that they open the top, they open up all the windows up on the top, and then they have 
uh, fireworks display. That'd be cool. That it would be cool. The coolest thing ever. It is so cool. And then they let, and then on that day they let you on the, on the field. Oh, they do. Yeah. They do. Oh. So I was there for one time for Fourth of July. It was pretty amazing. So do you go to a lot of those games or no? Not anymore. I used to go a lot, a lot more when my son was was um, little. Mm. He loved um, baseball, so I used to take him all the time. And then um, my youngest daughter liked it also so when she was little. So then I used to take them both to to the games oh, cool. a lot more. But now they're both grown and you know they do their own thing. And do they still go? They're not cool. I'm not cool to be with mom anymore. <laughs> so. Um, my daughter still does. My my daughter still does. My my son's got some pretty. Um, he struggles a lot with anxiety mm. and uh, being around people, a lot of people and stuff like that. So he doesn't get out much these days. So. Well, I'm sure that's something that they'll always remember is going to that. I mean, I I can remember when my dad took me to Dodger Stadium. You know, when you're little, it's just something that sticks with you forever. Yeah, they still talk about it. Yeah. They still talk about the games. That's a couple times. Neat. Yes. That's a couple of times when I just like I tell my my son like it's just the two of us today, let's go to the game. He's like, Okay <laughs> And we would get like, you know, like the really expensive tickets and we will be like right, you know, way at the bottom and the really cool you know, Did you ever really catch a ball? A ball? No, but you know what one time one of them came towards us and hit somebody like a right on the head, like right. Oh, that would us. hurt. Yeah. That would hurt. Yeah. The bad thing about the ballpark is you pay a lot of money for a ticket, but then you get in and the hot dog is like ten dollars. Yeah. Right. And popcorn's twelve dollars. Before you get out of there, you're spending over a hundred dollars in food too. It is very expensive. So, I mean, that's really big, it might be a little cheaper, but. Yeah, it was a good time. We sat in between. They played the Padres last night. And okay. So we had, what, four Padres fans? Yeah. Here? And oh. they were they were drunk. Oh. And yelling at the yeah, Diamondback yeah. fans that were sitting kind of in front of us. So it was it was actually pretty entertaining. They get into listen. it, let yeah. me tell you. Or when, um, uh, where the Dodgers count, mm -hmm. that, those games are like so entertaining because I mean they go at it and they just like yell at each other and then like you know if somebody makes a mistake on the, on the field they like they just kill the other <laughs> fans like oh my goodness they're so yeah they get really into it so you guys were over there by the by the pool there's a pool there you didn't see the pool either. No. Oh, come on, you guys missed out. Where was the pool? So, so, let's see. Base is here, right? So, and, let's see. It's, so, two, three, so right behind third. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's kind of right where we were kind of Okay, at. so there is a, a big um, wall right there, uh -huh. right? And right above the wall, that's where the, the pool is at. So you can actually buy tickets to be at the pool while the you're pool watching? watching the game. That yeah. cool. That's what we should have done. It is very, yeah, very cool. cool. It's right be below the, the big bar that they have there. Yeah, we missed that. Yeah. So right, because there's only one main gate, right? No. There's gates everywhere. All over? Oh. See, we went... I don't even know where, where we were at. So but we walked, the gate we were at, you walk straight through, and it's kind of right where our tickets were. Okay. So on the left field side, that gate. Okay. All right. So you guys were coming more from, like, the Washington Jefferson side more so than Probably. the street, the street number side. Yeah, we had to walk through, like, a parking structure. Okay. Right there to go through. But, but yeah, it was it was a good time. I'm glad we got to do that when we were down here. Yeah, that's an experience. I really, really would recommend that anybody could go and take a look at that place. It's so amazing. I wonder how how much season tickets are. Cause this is this would probably be the year to get season tickets if you could, because nobody's really going because of COVID. Yeah. Yeah. Might be 
cheaper, maybe a little cheaper to get, but they're probably pretty dang expensive. I don't know. I remember, um, I had a, my, um, I had a friend that had, um, season tickets, and then when he wouldn't use them, he would go, he would call me and say, hey, you want to use my tickets, you know, for the, for such and such game? Yes, we'll so, take yeah. Them. Those are the friends they have. We'll take them. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so it was always nice to have those, those tickets because then, like, you know, the, the same people sit there all the time, so mm -hmm. then you get to know the people that are sitting around you yep. and stuff like that. So it's kind of cool. Yeah. I don't think that they're very, they will be very expensive. They used to be once upon a time because, you know, baseball was like the thing to do. Mm -hmm. But... Now with COVID, everybody's so afraid of going anywhere and doing anything yeah. in public. That well, there's something to be said about just enjoying a baseball game and having a hot dog and a cold drink. And Heck yeah. Watching the game. Heck yeah. Just being in that. Mm -hmm. It's like the energy that is in there, that, yep. you know, the environment is so cool. Yep. I love that. Even if you're not a baseball fan, you still have to do it. That's how I became a baseball fan. By going to oh, go and watch it. To, yeah, going to watch the game. Cause I never used to like it before. You couldn't understand it. And then I had somebody that taught me how, you know, this is what that is and this is what that is. And I'm like, oh, okay, I can, you know, I can figure it out now. <laughs> so. And it's a lot better to watch it in person than on TV. Too. Oh, it's heck yeah. Completely different. Heck yeah. Have you ever been to, uh, let's see, what's the. What's the football Cardinals. team? Cardinals. Cardinals. Yes. When, one time I went to the Cardinals game. That'd be fun. But. Did you like it? It was, it was, it was, it was fine, but um, I was pregnant with my youngest daughter at the time, and it was hot, and it was like, uh, I don't know if I have to like go and stay here any longer, I just want to go home and just lay down, <laughs> kind of thing, so it, it probably wasn't the game, it was probably because I just needed get some rest right yeah. in a football game. <laughs> so that was a long time ago because my daughter is 19 now. So oh, I imagine yeah. how long ago was that, yeah. right? But, well, yeah. Yeah, I don't know much for football. I mean, I, I like, you know, I liked the day that I went. You know, it wasn't like, oh, I hated it or anything like that. But, you know. Do you watch sports on TV at all? No. If I would watch any sport, I would be watching baseball. Yes. yes. So, you know, right around that time when when they won um, the World Series, mm -hmm. then that's when I used to really watch it. Was that, how long ago was that? Was that when Randy Johnson played? Yeah. 2001 when Gonzo was, no, Gonzo oh, was yeah. the one that did the, uh, the winning hit. Crazy day. People were like going outside the streets and like celebrating and stuff. It was big. It was huh. big here. It's something that you know. Never you the parade. Well, the people just went outside yeah, just to yeah. like you know yeah, yell and they're just yeah. like yeah, you know everybody's screaming and you know like you know why they're outside mm -hmm. screaming because you know the, the Diamondbacks and then people had the Diamondback um, flags on their cars and you know for. The longest time after that. So. Sorry about that. That call came up last minute. We've got a response that's doing a thing by the fourth, and that's coming in quicker than we're happy about. So, time for a conference call. We were just discussing Diamondbacks baseball. Well, is there anything to talk about this year? No, they okay. went to the we went game, to a game last night. Oh, did you? Huh. Was the roof open? The roof yep. was open. Oh, that's awesome. It was. Yeah. It was Mark cool. McGuire hit one out the window. You know those big panels that open up? She was just telling me. Yeah, he hit one out the window. Really? really? Yeah, that, it, I know, it was like yeah, that's that's 420 feet or something like that. It was just insane. Hit it out the window. But, you know, you know, it's this lovely stadium that's shut most of the time. <laughs> Which well, is good. But it, yeah, it was when we got there, it was shut. Yeah. And then... Well, the opening is a dramatic thing because they cool it down and then all the air stays in there. So they'll open it up into June because all that cool air stays in, right? Okay. As the cool air stays, it you know settles and stays in, and then they can open it up, and you get this feeling. You decide if it opens or shuts, right? Who? It's the Diamondback pitcher who's pitching. Really? Really? Uh, 
the unit, Randy Johnson, didn't yeah, like yeah. it open. He didn't like it open. So it didn't matter what the weather was, it was shit when he was pitching. Really? Except for the time he hit that bird. Did you ever see that video? Yeah. Uh, yeah, flying when he was pitching. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, the bird was good. Anyway, interesting. There's still, we saw a lot of Randy Johnson jerseys still. Yeah. Well, he, he was he was a freak. Yeah. I mean, he was a freak. Big In dude. the very best sense of the term. This big, yeah. tall guy that had a lefty throw. I mean, oh my word. That that slider he had. Mm -hmm. Ugly. Yeah, that was, we had a good time. Last time. That's fun. What'd you eat? Hot dog. And we Chicken dog? Yeah. Good? Fun? Oh, that was good. Where were your seats? Where were you? One. 135? I don't know where that is, man. Right third now, base, right third, third base, base left yeah. right now. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. That's good seats. It's good nice. seats. It was perfect, yeah. I'm yeah. glad we got to go to that. That's fun. I'm that's glad fun. you enjoyed that, too. That's it's an awesome time. Yeah, that's yeah. really good time. I've been to Diamondbacks game. The last Diamondbacks game I went to was in San Diego. We were over in California. Uh, half of Arizona goes to California for the summertime for a week or two or whatever. And we were over there for a week. and went to a uh, Diamondbacks Padres game and it was 70 degrees, you know, it was perfect. It was That's gorgeous. Was playing last night. Yeah. Padres, Padres are the real deal this year, so. They whooped them. Yep. Well, and they, they had some fans letting them know, too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. It's good. <clears throat> cool. Sorry about the interruption. No, you're good. You're good. Um, back to discrepancies. Back, yeah. So, so Zulim, like I said, we... We're not accusing you of, of lying or anything like that. We just want to get ahead of this before it gets brought up in trial yeah. by either Chad's attorney or Lori's attorney or, or somebody brings it up and tries right. to discredit you. Mm -hmm. So, so I've kind of gone. Was that was that statement recorded from? from you know, I don't know. Okay, I, I don't know. That, that would be helpful. Or have or haven't? Yeah, this is because it's hard to it's hard to verify something that you don't remember making the statements you don't remember making. Right, yeah. and and they may have a recording. I just was pulling the Gilbert uh, mm -hmm. reports. Okay, um, so we talked about that. Um, so let's talk about the bag of cash that Alex gave you. Do you remember when he gave that to you? He didn't necessarily give it to me. He just a couple of days before he passed. I don't know if it was like one day or two days before he passed. He said to me, Sulama, if anything happens to me, I want you to know that there is money in a bag in the closet, and it's for you. He said, it's not much, but it's for you. Okay. And did you ever count the money that was in there? Or know how much was in there? Well, when... When, um, before he passed away, no, because I, I just said whatever, you know what I mean? I wasn't going to touch his money. But after the, um, after he passed away, I asked the police to bring it down. And, um, my daughter and her boyfriend started counting it. They did. And, and how much was in there? I think that there must have been about, probably, between five and seven thousand dollars, or something like that. Okay. Do you remember what else was in the bag? I still have the bag. Do you still have everything that was in it? Yeah. Do you remember what it was? It was in a. It was a bag. Uh, he had it in a plastic bag, like a Ziploc bag. Mm -hmm. And, um... I'm sorry, the money was in a Ziploc bag? Mm -hmm. In another bag? Yeah. Okay. And, uh... What else is in there? I've looked through that thing, like, a, I don't know how many times, and now for the life of me, I can't remember what's in there. Um... There might have been a, a pair of headphones in there. Um, I don't know. I can look in there and take a look and tell you what's in there. You take anything out of it? Uh, 
probably, I mean, I took the bag out, you know what I mean? And I took the headphones off, out because I started using them. I'm like, I wonder if these are good headphones. And I started using them. Did you take anything else out of it? It's possible. I wasn't paying attention to tell you the truth. Was I supposed to be looking for something? No, I'm just, I'm wondering, because we had reports there was some other things in there. Yeah. And. Like what? Like there was a gun associated with the bag of money. Oh, okay. That's mm -hmm. what you're asking for? You're asking for the guns, but the guns were in, in, in separate bags. With not not in the same bag of the, not in the bag of money. The bag of money was, a, it's like a black, black duffel bag type thing with a zipper. Okay. And then there's the, the gun, the guns that he left, they have their own, um, their own case. case. And they have, you know, it's like a case, like a gun case, mm -hmm. and then the gun goes in one thing, and then they have the clips, mm -hmm. and uh, so the, so just so I understand, the, the gun case was with the next, bag of money. Next. But not inside the bag. I don't think so, no. And just so I'm clear, the bag of money was in a Ziploc bag inside of another bag. Yes. And the, the gun was not inside the bag with the money, it's nor was it inside the bag that the money was in. Am I saying that right? Yeah, it's a, it, it has its own. Okay. It's own separate. Okay. Separate bag with a Ziploc, a zip, a zipper that goes around like that. So when you open it, you open it like a book. Okay. So in the in the duffel bag that the money was in, what else was in the duffel? Let, let me ask you this. Was there a phone in the duffel bag? Um, yeah, I think I think that's where they found a the phone. Because they took it. They took a phone. Like who? The police? The Gilbert police took a phone that was in there. Because it's in the... It's in the... Um, inventory that they that they they left you know when they take things they give you an inventory of what they take mm -hmm. or whatever mm -hmm. that there was uh there they said that there was a phone it's possible that they found it in there but i don't know where they found it to tell you the truth but they said that they did take that phone take a phone mm -hmm. a phone okay mm -hmm. you don't know where they got it from no okay. it's possible that it was in there yeah it could have been in alex's pocket the well, Alex was not didn't have any clothes on when when the so. Yeah, I was about to make yeah. flip about it. Maybe it could have been somewhere else. It's it? possible. Yeah. yeah. So so you don't re remember anything else? Of, did you ever go through the bag before your kids did? No. And so when Alex gave you that bag or or told you if anything ever happens to me, did you did you ask him like what? Why would anything ever happen to you? It, was that an odd statement that he had made? I did. I said, "Why?" I said, "Don't say things like that, Alex." I said, "Why would you say something like that?" And then he said, um, "Just in case, just in case." That's why the reason why I, I, in my back of my mind, I was thinking, "Did he do to something to himself? Why was he saying that two days before he passed?" So he tells you about the bag and says, "If anything ever happens to me." There's some money in the bag. It's not much, but there's some money in the bag, and that was two days before. Yeah, either the day before, or either the day before he passed, or the day prior to that. So in the last two days that he was alive. Okay. And then, so when you had that, let's go back to the conversation that you had with Alex when Tammy's body is being exhumed. Do you remember that conversation where you said you had confronted him and? said, Alex, are you going to have anything to do with this? Why would you think that he may have something to do with it? So, Lori and, um, and Chad had called that day, and they were the ones that told us that were, they were, um, that they were exhuming um, her, um, 
her body. And um, the way they were talking, they weren't really saying anything like, oh, we're worried or anything like that. Um, it was more of like a feeling that I had that was like, this is really weird. Like, shouldn't they be like having this kind of reaction type of thing? You know, not like so nonchalantly. Oh, they're exhuming her body today type of thing. Um, and I was like, why are they so not nonchalantly about it? Like, if are they are they hiding something? Did they do something? Did they not do something? And uh, so that's why I just I wanted to. I knew that if I asked Lori and Chad about anything, they probably wouldn't say anything. But I thought that if they had been doing something, if they had, he had done anything, Alex would probably tell me. So that's why I pressured him. I'm like, do, would you have anything to do with this? Like, they they seen this this body and are they gonna find anything? Did you have anything to do with this? And he said no. But I mean, I don't know if that was true or not. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Okay. Because and the reason I ask is because let's say if if my wife gets a call and. They say one of her friends is being exhumed. That wouldn't be that wouldn't be a question I would ask my wife is, did you have anything to do with this? That wouldn't even cross my mind. Do you know what I mean? It yeah. would be more like, hey, we're telling you it's getting exhumed. Right. Information wise, this is what's going on. So that's why that's why I wanted you to maybe expand a little bit on on maybe why you thought or or suspected Chad and Lori may have have done something to Tammy, or that maybe Alex had, had known about something or had done something? So I remember that they were saying that um, Tammy had become a zombie. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Yep. And they were talking. He, well, I don't know, I don't know who was saying who because they always like, oh, I was told, Lori would say I was told and then Chad would say very little, and then it was kind of communicated through her. So it's kind of hard to tell who was that, I mean, the information was coming from. But they were saying that Tammy was supposed to um, die on her trip to um, Utah. She was supposed to have a, he was, like he had seen it in a vision that she was going to die in a car accident in the, in the way there, or something was going to happen that she was going to pass away. Okay. And then when she didn't, she didn't pass away, then what the, they were saying was that she actually did pass away, but what happened was that she was taken over by an evil spirit, and then they were, um, that she had become a zombie, okay? So, in the back of my mind, here I am thinking, Okay, they said the same thing about Charles, right? And then Charles ended up being shot, right? And I'm thinking, okay, you guys are not trying to say that you guys are going to do something physically to people who are, you know, who are turning um, into zombies, according to them. That was my thought. Um, so, uh, refresh my memory again, what was Alex's response to your question to him? So, he sat back and, um, he sat back on the, like, in the back on, and pressed his back towards, like, the back of the bed, the, the headboard, and he goes, no, that's it, there's no answer after that. Nothing else. And I was waiting for him to say something else, and I'm like, so, like, okay. I'm like, are you going to say anything else? And he's like, no. Like, okay. So I thought when he was so, he seemed so sure of his answer, 
I was like, well, okay, well then he didn't have anything to do with this. Okay, and is that the same conversation? You, that's the same conversation you kind of got after, right? And, and we're pretty, maybe forceful is not the right word, but aggressive towards him as far as tell me what's going on. Is yeah, that because that was when he, because right after he, you know, so then I, I press for the for another answer and he tells me no, right? So then I am going, so then I stand up and I start walking away because I'm like, I don't know what to think at this, at this point. And that's when he said, I think I am being their um, fall guy. And I'm like, the fall guy for what? What is it? Tell me. What is it that they're going, they're trying to pin on you? What, what did they do? And he just won't say anything else. And then, so then I get frustrated again because he's not answering my questions. So I turn around and I'm going to walk away again, you know, because I'm just so frustrated that he's not saying anything. And that's when he tells me either I am a man of God or I am not. Okay. Now, at the time, because I turned around and I said, what does that mean? What does that mean, Alex? Tell me what does that mean? You can't, it's like you can't just tell me these things and, and not say anything to me. And I was so frustrated with him, so mad, really, because he wasn't saying anything else to me. And um, that, you know, I <laughs> guilt it. I thought for sure that I had brought given him a heart attack because I was, you know, kind of pouncing on him, you know. Now putting it all back, and now I understand that you know um, they were probably telling him to um, blessings to do certain things, and he that he in his mind was either either I'm following what God is telling me, or I am not. Did you have a question about that? Maybe? No. I thought I saw you written something down. Um, okay. Did, so after he had said that, I think I'm going to be the fall guy. I think I'm going to be their fall Their fall guy. Did it any... I, did you think that Chad and Lori had done something to Tammy? Was that your impression based on that statement? I didn't know what to think at the time. I didn't. I didn't know what to think. I. It would. It. It was so confusing for me at the time because I saw at at the time I still saw Lori and Chad as a very spiritual kind, loving, charming, law-abiding, God-fearing people. Okay. So there was no, to me, it would be like, you know what I mean? So even when he was say, even when when he said that, I was like, the fall, fall guy for what? Like, what was it? What, what is, what is going on? You know what I mean? And like, I just, I couldn't even put process it or put two and two together. What is it? So what was it that they, they would do? Okay. I mean, these things didn't even come together for me until like months and months and months of me thinking and processing and putting things together. You know what I mean? Um, because to tell you the truth, until, until um, they found the remains of the children, I still thought that there was a possibility that they had him hiding somewhere, that the kids were going to be alive. That's what we all hoped to. Yeah. I really believe that they would, that they had them hiding somewhere. I believed them. They really did. That's what they were saying. They were keeping them safe. So on, so on these conference calls with you and Chad and Lori and then there was Melanie and Ian um, you guys talk about you guys talk about a code word to make sure it's safe to talk do you 
remember talking about that with them? Yeah, because um, remember I told you that the day that Alex and I were going um, to Vegas, that day uh, when I got back from the spa, he wasn't in the house. And so then I called him and I said, hey, where are you at? And he's like, oh, I'm in the, I'm in the walkway, the green field behind the house with Gib and, um, and Melly. So I, he's like, just come out back here and, um, and meet us back here. So when I got to where they were at, that's what they were talking about. They were making that code word to say, this is safe to talk. This is not safe to talk. Do you remember what the words were? So it was, uh, Pretty bird. Um, and the other one was um, not happy Bob. Not happy Bob. So which one meant it was okay to talk? Pretty bird? I think it's the opposite. I think that pretty bird was not. Okay. And then um, Not happy Bob meant it was okay. Not happy Bob. Meant it was okay. Okay. So whose phone number did you call when, when, because they would call you from Ian's phone. Whose, whose phone number would you call to conference everybody through? Mm, I think they had so many numbers. <laughs> yeah, they did have a lot. And that's kind of what we're trying to figure out is what, whose phone you were calling to conference everybody in together. Because every time they would call, they would call you and then you would do the calling. I think so. Or I think sometimes we will call and they will call back. And sometimes they will call, they will answer, and then and then um, three-way the other person. I think it was a couple of times it was Chad's phone, and then I think a couple of times it was the um, Lori's um, new phone number or the last phone number known that that we knew, anyways. Okay. I think it was both of them. I off the top of my head. Okay. And I don't think that my phone records would go back that far. Okay. They probably do. The numbers do. Yeah. So a couple <coughs> a couple times to Chad and a couple times to Lori. Mm-hmm. Just mm-hmm. depending on who. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. a lot of times um, they wouldn't answer. They just, you know, I'm going to tell you about that ghosting that they, they would do. Mm-hmm. Um, so a lot of times we would call one number and then they wouldn't answer, then we would call the other number. And sometimes they would answer and sometimes we would call the other number again. So there was a lot of that calling and no answer and then sometimes they would call back. And that's when they lived in Hawaii. Well, they were in Hawaii, but you know, at the time. Because that was after November. Right. Right. Yeah. And I saw for sure that they were um, in um, in I thought they were somewhere in Utah or somewhere in there because one time uh, there was there was this conversation and uh, they they were laughing. They were laughing because they said that Lori had gotten stuck in her car because of a storm and uh, she couldn't move uh, in her car and she had to spend some hours or like, you know, like part of the night or the whole night somewhere until she could actually get um, through the storm. So at the time I thought 
in my mind I thought um, that it was like a snowstorm that she couldn't get through and I thought well probably Utah that's what I was thinking you know but I don't know if it was a, a storm over there or what were they here still and before they left for for Hawaii I don't know but or, or were they telling you that to put you off what was really right yeah. it's possible also. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah right And that's one of the things that she would say would be, for your protection, we're not telling you where we're at. For your protection. So, so how come you would you would were the designated, or or how come you were always the one who would make the calls? How come it wouldn't be Ian or or Melanie or anybody else within the group that would call Chad Mori? <laughs> I don't know. I guess it was just kind of like I just kind of take over kind of thing. I don't know. Maybe. I, there was no really a particular reason why I would. Did, there wasn't like a designation know, or anything like that. Did everybody know their number in the group? Um, at that time, um, no, they didn't because... Um, I remember uh, one of those conversations, I remember that we put um, Melly on the phone and I remember her, she just started crying and crying because they weren't answering calls and that one of the numbers I guess wasn't working anymore so she hadn't talked to them since they had left um, uh, Rexburg. And when you say Melly, that's Melanie Booker. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, the way that they were part of the manipulation and part of that indoctrination and, and getting you to be part of this this you know needing them and being you know you know close to them and stuff like that was their constant um, offering you a blessing of comfort or or offering you a, um, a blessing of something that was going to happen so promising you something so it was almost as if when you you get that on a constant basis all the time and then all of a sudden you don't it's almost as if you're like whoa what happened there you know what i mean all of a sudden you feel like oh my goodness i have no guidance now you see that mm -hmm. um and uh and i believe that if I'm, i can't say what how nelly was feeling at the time but I would imagine that she was feeling like, um, you know, she hadn't had any contact or anything from them um, since they left the expert. So she was, I remember her being in tears at that conversation. So kind of off what you said is when she was in tears and, and did she or anybody ask you for their numbers? They, well, because they knew you had them, right? Because you were the one that was calling. So did they ever say, or after the conference call when she talked, and you talked to Chad and Lori, did Alex or, or Melanie or Ian or anybody ask you, say, hey, well, can you forward me their number? I'd like to call them and talk to them. Or was it just you that solely had their? No, they had their number too. They had their number. If I'm not mistaken, if I, it's probably, I can't say for sure, but I'm thinking that it was probably given to Melly that day during the call. During one of the conference calls? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
I don't remember. Th- I I really don't know why that was. That kind of became like a. Um, Pattern? Pattern, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, I didn't even see it as a pattern until you are, you know, until you're bringing it up. I didn't even mm-hmm. realize that it had become a pattern like that. So, you know, and it's possible that it was part of that, you know, manipulation, part of that, you know, you're the contact person kind of thing, or, you know, putting you in this. This is one thing that I was, now that we're talking about this, um, one of the things that they they started saying to me from the beginning was that um, putting me in a position of um, being so special um, and uh, you know like Glory and, and Chad used to say to me often um, you know your your mission is the most important one um, we have to take care of you more than we have to take care of anyone else because your mission is most important and more important than anybody else's. Um, They always said that to me from the beginning, from the beginning. Um, And there was, you know, Lori would say that sometimes when we would just get together, she would, you know, say that, oh, everybody has to, you know, make sure that they, you're praying and taking care of Solano because her mission is the most important. And if they had some pretty crazy plans, mm-hmm. I mean, now it would make sense why. Yeah. That <laughs> would be the most important if that's, you know, yeah. if that was part of the plan of plan. So along those lines, with you being the most important mission, and I know we've talked about this a little bit as, as far as your marriage with Alex. Was Chad or Lori directing you to, to marry Alex? They were suggesting it, and they were saying that we should be together. Um, they, Chad did give me a blessing one time, saying that I would get married again. And uh, I remember telling him, I don't know about that. I'm like, I already told myself that I was never going to be married again, so I don't know about that. But um, I do have a feeling, even though I never heard it myself, I do have a feeling that they were probably saying that to Alex. So did, did Chad or Lori ever tell you, as part of your mission, that, that you need to marry Alex, or that part of your mission is marrying Alex? So, the way that they presented it was that in order for people to finish their missions, they always had to have somebody that was going to be um, equal in their, um, I guess in their spirituality, equal to them, and that they were going to be a helper to complete that mission. So then they started um, saying, you know, Alex will be part of that for you. He will be the person who will be able to help you uh, with your mission, and he will be the supporter that you will need, um, and uh, things like things like that. So did you believe that in order for your mission to be complete, that you needed to marry Alex? Did you believe that? Uh, I. I wasn't sure, to tell you the truth, if I really had a mission. I kind of took their word for what they were saying. Um, they, um, like often they would say, okay, Salama, we want you to do this. And I would go, okay, and I would just say a prayer or whatever. And then they would say, oh, Salama, this is what you did. So it was never like I would be able to, you know what I mean? Like, am I really doing any of this stuff? Or are they just like saying that because they were confirming it for me or, you know, stuff like that. So I I had a lot of uh, like things that were in my mind that were like, I don't know about this. So it was a lot of, I used to tell them all the time, I, I, I'm putting that on the shelf until I can understand it or until I have more information or, you know, or whatever you know, a prompting or something about that. 
and I kept, you know, praying and praying and praying about, you know, about Alex, and um, he was, he was like, he was there, you know what I mean, from the beginning, he was like, I want a relationship, I, you know, and I don't, I'm not messing around, he was like, you know, I want to get married, and I mean, he was, he was insistent about it, and I was like, no, wait, let's wait, no, I don't have an answer, I'm not sure about that, and uh, I, I had my doubts, let me put it that way, I, I had my doubts, and then I kept praying and praying and praying, and then um, once Alex and I got to know each other a little bit better, and we started spending time together and talking to each other, um, I really, I really started liking him. And the things I liked the most about him was that he was the kind of person that I could go deep, deep conversations and deep discussions about the scriptures. And he knew the scriptures very well. And uh, sometimes we would sit on the phone for like two hours discussing scriptures. And I'm like, I've never been able to do any like that with anybody, mm -hmm. much, much less, you know, someone who was interested in me. You know what I mean? Um, so when I went there, the um, I think I went there in October. I think it was around October seventh. Um, he was ready to get married. He was. He was like. He said that he had called. Um, um, I guess another county where you can just go, kind of like Las Vegas type thing, you can just go and you can get your your license and you can get married right away. And he was like, I mean, he was- Ready to go. He was ready to go. And I was like, no, Alex, I'm like, I am not 100% sure that I want to do this. So I, I need to wait, I need to wait. And he's like, okay, we'll wait for as long as you want to, we'll wait. Um, I mean, he wanted to, but he wasn't like pressuring me. You know what I mean? He just said he was ready. And then um, when um, he was um, coming back down from um, from Rexburg for when he was coming down for Thanksgiving, a couple of days, I think it was no, I think it was the day before he arrived. Um, I was praying and I was asking, and I just got this feeling that. Like, okay, I think that it's time for me to marry him. Did, so, do you think Alex was pressuring you because Chad and Lori wanted him to get married to you? Mm -hmm. It's possible. And this might be a tough question. Do you think Alex truly loved you or was just doing it because Chad and Lori told him to? I have asked that myself many times and I. I don't know if someone could actually fake it that well. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, if I didn't love somebody, I don't know if I could be that doting over that person. Um, at least I couldn't fake it. Maybe he could. And if he could, if he could fake it, then he was a really good faker. Okay because he was like, he, he doted over me. And maybe that's one of the things that they told him to do. Maybe that's what he's, you know, maybe that was his orders that they had given him was for him to be doting over me. But he would like, from the minute that he got up until he went to bed, he made sure that I was Taking happy, that I was taken care of, that I had everything. Like I told you, I mean, one day I was like, mm, you know what sounds really good right now, Alex? I'm like, he's like, what? I was like, salsa and chips. And he's, he got up and he picked up his kiss and goes, I'll be right back. And he was out the door. He went and got me a chips and salsa. And he came back. He goes, here you go. And he would say it all the time, as you wish. As you wish. So I don't know. It is a possibility that, yes, he could have faken that yet, so it had to be a really, really good faker. Um, were you in love with him when you got married, or were you doing it because Jen I Lori? I loved him. I loved Alex very much. I'm just going to go back on a couple questions on this. Um, 
before we stopped the first time, we were in the hospital with Alex, and um, I, I, I think it was Chandler or Gilbert that was in there, Gilbert, Gilbert yeah. Luis in the hospital as well. Your son-in-law said um, that he has an attorney now, so if you want to talk to us, talk to the attorney. What did he need an attorney for at that time? Um, you mean what did he need an attorney or what no. did he need if, an if, attorney and for I me? might have misunderstood you before Garrett stepped out the first time. Uh, you were telling Ray once Alex was in the hospital, you were there and I believe your son-in-law was there and the Gilbert police were asking something and he mentioned to him that he either he has an attorney or there's an attorney for Alex so talk to the attorney now was he talking about Alex having an attorney at that time or was he talking about himself having an attorney does that make sense yes so he um he was talking about he he was saying that his attorney um to talk to his attorney because he was going to be representing me at from then on Talk to Alex's attorney? No, to, or to my son-in-law's attorney. Okay, why would he need an attorney? Yeah, I guess is what I'm asking. Why, did, why yeah. did he have an attorney? Yeah, why would he need one at that time? Um, so what happened was that um, my son-in-law came out of a parking lot from... Um, let me cut you off and tell the story. I, I don't think he cared why your son-in-law knew the attorney. Did your son-in-law need an attorney under this investigation? Under this, no, not okay. under, not under this investigation. Okay, he so the police attorney was for her. Oh, he, he contacted he an attorney that he knew for her. her. Okay, yes. yeah, and I guess that's what I'm getting at. Why did you feel you needed an attorney at that time? I didn't. He felt that. I he did. felt okay. All right, that, all right. That's what I was. Sorry if that was confusing. Yeah, I had, I, like, I, I was so out of it at the time. I didn't yeah, even know. I didn't know what was coming or going, and, and he was adamant. He was like, um, he was like, nope, you are not speaking to the police without an attorney. And then I remember when I got home, they tried to, um, um, to interrogate me again. This time. They said that they were going to separate me and the kids and um, and interrogate us again. And then again, my my son-in-law called and said, um, "Your attorney is going to be calling him, calling that gotcha. the person and said, you know, just because he had taken me to his car and." He's like, just get out of the car, tell him that he needs to talk to your attorney, go inside, tell the kids that you're not answering any more questions, and that to talk to the attorney from now on. So I went inside and told the kids that. Was there a reason why he thought you needed an attorney? Did you know? Or was it just, yeah, he knew, did you know? He, he, you know? he had had a really bad experience with the police just prior to that that's okay. the reason why he knew that a really bad experience um and uh he just didn't trust please yeah. okay. um <coughs> during the time when you talked to Lori and chad uh and melanie did you ever have any other phones or did you always just have your one one phone okay. and the reason why i ask this is because throughout this whole investigation there's been throw phones over here, throw phones over there. You mentioned throw phones last time uh, you and I spoke here. Did you ever have any other phones or phone numbers? No. Okay. This is the only phone I ever had. I wait. I did have. I did get a phone, like I told you guys, the day that Alex died, because the police took my phone and I needed to have a phone until they returned okay. it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. And. It might have been bills enough or something. You might have already talked about this. Well, I know we talked about the code words and and all that. When would you need to use code words, and and why did Chad and Lori think that code words were necessary? So the way that they had expressed it was because 
you know, you were a high level six um, dark person. And so was sure you your, went into, I mean, that's oh, yeah, so I your partner, right? <laughs> I'd be his boss. And they, you guys were seeking their destruction. And um, you guys were working with Kay seeking their destruction. And they um, needed to have protection because, you know, they were saying that the kids were safe and they had them in a safe place. So, you know, in order for them to be safe from you and your UK and your partners, because you were all very high level dark people. Gotcha. Okay, that makes sense. Um, do you mind looking in your phone to see if I've got a number, and I was wondering if it might match up to someone you might know? Okay. Um, it's 602 290 7288. 602 290? Yeah. Nothing comes up. But for some reason, that 290 isn't that part of Alex's number? It's in your phone, it should be popular. Yeah. I'm a lot of stuff then. My granddaughter got a hold of that phone that I had during those Everything. And uh in in I don't know if you knew this, but I didn't know this, that if your phone and your old phone are connected to the same Wi-Fi that if you do something on the old phone, it will show up on your new phone. Gotcha. So she deleted like deleted all that. hundreds and hundreds of phone numbers oh, on no. my phone. <coughs> I'm still trying to recoup them. So. Do you still have um, Chad in your phone at all? I think so. What, what do you have his numbers? <coughs> He had one that he kept all the time. Let me see if it's still there. No, it's not. Okay, let me see if I can find it under um, my text. See, that's one of the ones that got that got deleted. Okay, um. I have two or eight. Six nine zero nine three seven four. Okay. Was that the only one? I'm looking, let's see if there is any other one. <coughs> um I don't see another one. Okay. I know, I mean, throughout all this, looking into stuff, Chad went by another name, Raphael. Do you have that in your phone by chance? Oh, let me see. Maybe. No, I don't. But... Does that ring a bell with you, though, the Raphael? Mm Mm-hmm. I remember he had changed the number and um, Alex uh, asked me for it and his number was 602-290-7288. Is that the one that you were just asking me for? Yeah. Yeah. So, so That's is Chad. It? That's Chad. And Alex texted you that. Yes. When did he text you that? Do you still have that? He texted me that on December 5th. So on on believe on a couple of those recordings you referred to him, Chad as Raphael. Is that what you called him normally, or did you normally call him Chad? 
I he would I would call him Chad. Chad. Mm-hmm. So when did you call him? Sometimes you just call him Raphael, because on one of those you say, "Let me call Raphael's calling through." Is that is that? Just sometimes you would call him that, or yeah, during sometimes. certain times. Or? I think that um, <clears throat> uh, Alex used to call him Raphael a, a, a lot. Um, so if I was saying something like that, it's probably because Alex was with me. Because he would call him that. Gotcha. Okay. So. Well, you still had it in your phone. That's good. The the number. Yeah. I mean, I don't have that particular number in my text or in my phone, but I remember him asking me for that number. And I remember me saying, Raphael just reached out to me and he has a new number. Oh, nice. And that was on the 5th of December? On the, on the 4th. Oh, 4th. Okay. And then, and then uh, Alex, Alex asked me for it on the 5th. Gotcha. And then, on the 6th, I remember he's, he went and got pizza for, for all of us to have dinner. And then on the 7th, he went to Mexico. Okay. And came back sick. Um, I was just doing follow-up on that. Did you have any more? Do you do you still have some? No. Um, yeah, Zulima, we we appreciate it. Uh, I know you hate to talk about this stuff. And, and I want to help. And we we appreciate it. And that's why, you know, I don't know what the defense plan is going to be with with Chad and Lori. Um, it could be that they try to throw everybody else under the bus and. They try to use different things or say different things. That's why it's super important if you can remember anything. Um, that way, you can get we can get out in front of it before defense has a chance to get it and to get it and and Gary knows that. Understand. So knows that right now. we just want to make sure that we're we're crossing our T's and dotting our I's with everything. That way, we can come out in front of it. Mm-hmm. You guys, you know, I still have those pair of scissors in my house, right? Oh, Lori's. Lori's scissors. That are a hundred and something dollars or three hundred and something. thousand dollars. Oh, that's way up. Serious scissors. But, yeah, like Grace said, we appreciate it. I always have that feeling that there was something really nefarious about her giving me those scissors. I still do. And she gave them to you? When she came home from Hawaii, right? When they, when you met them, and when they, when they had this gun back for getting married, the layover, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. And for some strange reason, in my mind, because I'm trust, trusting people, in my mind, I was like, oh yeah, she can't take him on the plane with her, so you know. And then my daughter said, Mom, she just got out of a, got off of a plane. With them. Why couldn't she take them back on the plane with her? Well, let me let me do some checking. Maybe if do you want them, or do you? I just have. I don't want to have anything to do. I mean, maybe <laughs> maybe we can just. It's just really. It's so bizarre. Why would she hand me those things? It makes absolutely no sense for her to. I wonder. Me those I wonder things. how she got on the plane with them in the first place, and then. Didn't want them to go. Did she check bags? Do you know? Because they could be in check bags. Yeah. Oh yeah, I guess they could. Is there was a check bag, or I mean, it could have been missed. You know, uh, lots of possible explanations. And the other thing that I remember that I I was telling um, Garrett was that when we were in um, in Vegas, um, I don't know if you guys knew, but uh, Alex was a massage therapist. And uh, um, he 
my back was bugging me and uh, after you know the trip there and in the car and he said uh, oh he's like I'll just give you a massage and you know just fix your back I'm like okay so but for some strange reason this is really weird like for some strange reason at the time of course I didn't think anything about it but you know now I'm like creeped, all creeped out about it um, he said that he we needed to find a Walmart because he wanted to buy this big huge piece of plastic to put on the bed so the oil didn't get on the bed but it was one of those ones that you put on the floor when you Painted. when you paint okay and we went to Walmart <coughs> and we got it and you put it on the bed and this is when you were in Vegas when we were in Vegas yeah it was the day after we got married so so you put it on the bed yeah and he gave you the massage what did you, and then what and did you do with the, the weirdest bed? thing about it was that and this is when it gets even weirder because after that I fell asleep Okay, because I was so relaxed after the, the massage, I was so relaxed, I fell asleep. And then um, I remember waking up, I was in and out, in and out, and I could hear him talking. And I was like, who's he talking to? And I kept like trying to wake up, and finally I'm like, I made myself wake up, and I'm like, Alex, I'm like, who are you talking to? He's like, nobody. I was talking to myself. I'm like, okay. So then, um, I remember I took a bath, and uh, I said, let's, I said, let's watch a movie. And he was like, he was on his phone, I think playing his game or something. And he was like super quiet. It was totally eerie for Alex because Alex usually like, he was like joking, and he would like, you would say something, and he would find one way or another to make it into a joke and make it funny. And like, he was always making you laugh and laughing at himself or making a joke about something but he said nothing for the rest of the evening nothing well that's really weird that he had you lay on plastic so maybe i'm just a little too crazy now because of all the stuff that's happened but in my back of my mind i keep thinking that who was on the phone was Chad and Lori, and that that was supposed to be my last day, and he was supposed to. And it very well could have been. Did when so when you woke up, were you did you feel like did you feel normal? I mean, did you feel like when you said you were in and out, in and out of consciousness, like you were trying to wake up, or you didn't feel right? Like I was really down. Like I was really, really like one of those ones when you're like trying to wake up and you can't wake up kind of thing like I was like I was thinking why am I so relaxed and I can't wake up kind of thing you know what did I mean? Feel, did you feel drugged? Drowsy like just I was kind of like really like drowsy drowsy I was like why what time of day was it? In the middle of the afternoon. Did you did he give you anything to drink before that or make you a drink or Fix you anything to eat. I don't remember. I mean, I I remember us going to get something to eat, and then um, we came back to the hotel, and I remember we did have some drinks with us, like you know, I don't know, maybe I might, I mean, I might have had like a. No, I didn't have a Red Bull that day. I had something with me. It might have been a water or something, I don't know, with me. And I always used the little cup, and, you know, the, I, I didn't like to use the little glasses. So I always had my glass with ice and whatever it was that I was drinking at the time. So, so did he end up, did he give you a massage? I mean, did you have oil on? Not enough to... To use... Or to drop off. To what I dropped off, you know what I mean? Uh, it just didn't, at the time, I had no question about it. Now I'm like, well, why, would you necess- why would you necessitate a whole job class all over the bed to give me a massage? That, that just doesn't make any sense to me at all. Mm-hmm. So did. And then the fact that he was quiet for the rest, that he said nothing. 
like nothing after that. He was quiet, and I, it, that's so not Alex. Alex is not quiet. So did you ever say, did you ever ask him like, man, what, why did we need all that or what? No. And, and so he, you heard totally. him talking to somebody. Mm -hmm. And I believed him and he was talking to himself, you know, at the time, you know what I mean? Trusting him completely. Um, and that was right after you guys were married? The day after. Yeah, it's really weird. It is. And I even asked him, I said, hey, I said, are you okay? Like, like you're so quiet. Are you sure you're not quiet like this? He's like, I'm just tired. I'm like, okay. I'm like, well, I'm going to leave you alone then so you can rest. Then. So I left him alone. He didn't say anything else. So I ended up watching him with me for my son. I was like, well, he's on Dream. I gave him the and it's little things like that, that that we're super interested in. So if anything like that comes to you again, something that you may think is super small, please let Garrett yeah, know. We'll, or We'll communicate it to you for sure. That that was super weird. Let us know, yeah. Just little things like that that help us put pieces together. Did Was that the only time that happened? Did he give you massages before? No. Okay. Did he did he sense then? Uh no. So that was the one time he yeah. offered to give you massage. When we would get together sometimes he would come um and he would put his fingers on my on my on my neck and go he would say, What is it with you peop with you uh translated people that have such big uh, stressful shoulders or something like that he would say that but I wasn't the only one that was receiving it he would do it to everybody else you know just kind of like relax my you know the neck and then when we got back from Vegas and we were um in my house sometimes in the morning they I have a really hard time waking up and then in the mornings I would like turn my mail room off and just sit there trying to like get up and I remember he would like wrap his finger like up and down my my back and go you pick it up, you can wake up, kind of thing, like kind of waking me up, but not a massage, massage like he did that day. So when you woke up from that massage, did you feel like you were way too groggy than you should have been? I was or super, I thought, I'm like, oh my goodness, he's like, well, it must be a really good, you know, massage therapist because I am so relaxed right now, like I am like so, so relaxed, like I felt like, you know, like when you get out of like the um, sa the sauna, you know, when you get out of the sauna, you're like so relaxed, you could actually take a nap. That's what I thought. So you didn't feel out of it? No, it was I didn't. Just, it was just relaxed. Very relaxed. Yeah, like super. That what was really weird though was that in and out that I had when I was laying on the bed because I was, I could hear him talking and I was trying to wake up, but I, Kept going back down, and then I kept hearing him again talking, and I and I couldn't discern what he was saying. And I could just hear him talking, and he was in the bathroom talking. Did he kind of talk to himself much? Well, not really. <laughs> not like that. Like he was actually having a conversation. Like he sounded like he was having a conversation. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like when I talk to myself, I'm always like. You know, say one thing or two things. Or they something. don't go to McDonald's for lunch. You know, yeah, something like, something that, like that. But no, no it's just point is, you know, you have this He was having a yeah. like a conversation. Okay. So it, you know, now <laughs> of course putting all this together and processing after, you know, over a year, I keep thinking that he was actually on the phone with somebody when when he, this was happening. There was no way that he was going to necessitate it big old drop cloth for that bed to give me a massage. When, when you guys got married or prior to get married, did you guys talk about insurance or life insurance or, or did you add him to anything or did he add you to anything? Not that I know of. Mm -hmm. 
کنار کبوتی با بس میدن But I wasn't the one that I I wouldn't have had any knowledge of that, but Laurie would, because you know Charles was in that business. So. Do you? We're here till Saturday, so if you want to give us those scissors, we'll be more than happy to take them off your hands and you just lock them into evidence. Okay. Um, if you don't, yeah, if you don't want them. No, I don't. We can You don't need me, you can just bring them by here anytime. It's in the phone. Yeah, that would be great. Mm-hmm. We'll be here till Saturday morning. Yeah, I think so. So anytime between then, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, that's not a problem. Yeah, I'll just bring them over because I think of tomorrow is my report day, so I don't have any cases tomorrow, so I'll just um, drop them off sometime tomorrow. Maybe awesome. I'll just that's do cool. my make it into my lunch hour so I can get a nice little break from there being you go. for <laughs> Enjoy the nice hours. warm weather. <laughs> Zulima, do you have any questions for us? Anything we can answer? Anything at all? I have a lot of questions. Well? A lot of questions. You know, um, I have a question on, you know, on this people's sanity you know I was asking myself whether it's because these people are insane or because they are just led by evil you know um, I now I'm putting all the things together I just really more than ever at the beginning I had a feeling that they had a really nefarious plan to do something to me and to Alex or that we were the final piece, that I was the final piece to move to Rexburg and I feel that, um, you know, by, by the grace of God I didn't move there and I always feel that, um, kind of like dodge the bullet by not moving there and if I would have moved there things would be very different today. Probably. I thought, and now more than ever, I think that they had, and of course the, the, the question is in my mind about, you know, was Alex being true? Was he lying? Was he being told to do what to do? Um, did he really have a relationship with me because he just was following what Chad and Laurie were telling him, you know what I mean? All that, <laughs> and at that time in Vegas, was that was he supposed to kill me that day? You know, was he being instructed to do that? Yeah. And I would think like, okay, he he couldn't get he he couldn't go through, with, you know, killing me, but. He would have gone through to kill himself. So, all that, you know, I have a lot of questions. <laughs> That's a lot to weigh on your mind. Mm-hmm. So. Well. And I'm sorry, I can't remember much of that night. Of that night, Alex passed away. I just don't, there's no, I can't even put what happens first and what happens at that time at the hospital. Okay. Can't remember much. Well, if like I said, if you have questions or, or you want to reach out or something, you go through yeah. your or always you still have my card. I do. Yep. I've got you in my phone. So I mean I have the card but I've got you in my phone, so it's better than a card. <laughs> so, Cool. Okay, well, thank well, we you again. It. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Good to see you again. I'm yeah, glad you guys got to enjoy Good to see you. Uh, April and Phoenix. Yeah. Well, and, and you got us to go see a diamond fax game. Yeah. Next time, you guys got to go to the pool. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You guys still on track for July? Uh, I'm not sure. 
Probably not. Yeah, we were talking about that. I said I would be surprised if it went, but yeah. No, it'll probably be pushed back a little bit. Yeah. 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 Yeah.